Good morning. Time to make the coffee. Well, it sounds like my little coffee maker actually boils the water for the coffee. So the coffee is always nice and hot when it comes out, which is good. I, I like this little Fammy Worth's coffee maker that makes iced coffee and hot coffee. Now I haven't really made iced coffee in it yet. The iced coffee that I've made has been in uh, cold brew in the fridge, which I really like. Cold brew is very smooth. It doesn't have that bite that uh, hot coffee has, but it uh, it's strong. It's it's very concentrated if you leave it in the refrigerator um, like for 24 hours. So, so far I've made my iced coffee that way. But I'll make it this way too when I don't have the other iced coffee available. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put some cream in my coffee. Uh, it's supposed to be 79 today. And ah, there we go, turn the light on. And mostly sunny, it said, which is nice. I think I might go outside and try and do a little harvesting. I'm going to have to dehydrate a lot of my food because um, I do have a lot of food in my freezers. And I don't want to have to get another freezer. I'm not much into canning, and besides, so far, what I'm growing out there um, isn't really meant for canning. It's more uh, greens right now that are ready to eat. My zucchini and uh, yellow squash and eggplant and hopefully okra isn't anywhere near ready to produce anything. Same with my green beans. They're just starting to come up. So those will be my summer veggies, and maybe by then I'll have a little more room in my freezers. So let's give this a taste. Cheers. Very good. I have about enough of this coffee left, the smooth and uh, gentle on the stomach, for maybe one more cup of coffee. And then it'll be gone. So that's another thing I like about this family worths. You can either use a pod or you can use loose coffee. And it, you don't need a special um, adapter to make the uh, loose coffee. It comes with both a filter for that and the little pod thing. I, I'm not affiliated with family worth or, you know, trying to sell anything here. I'm just doing kind of a little review on my own of uh, what I think of it. So anyway, um, that's that on the coffee maker. Uh, I have a lot of canning jars and things like that. Um, I could do some canning, but eh, honestly, it's not my thing. I find canning kind of labor-intensive. I'm trying to get away from labor-intensive things, but if that's the only way that I can preserve some food when the time comes, then maybe I'll go ahead and do that. I'm not sure. But like I said, I'm probably going to dehydrate a lot of the greens and things and um, uh, add it to my soups and stews and uh, make... Um, spices out of it, you know. Sometimes when you look at spices, it contains tomatoes and green pe or peppers, whether it's hot peppers or sweet peppers. A lot of times those ingredients are uh, in spices. So that would re require me making a powder out of it, which I could easily do using one of my uh, spice grinders or coffee grinders, anything like that, will give you a nice powder. You can do the same thing with um, with fruit. You can make powder out of that 
and then you can always add it to your smoothies or whatever you have. So, you know, don't throw your food away. Try using different methods of um, reinventing the use of your food. So that way you'll always have food security and you don't have to worry where your next nutritious meal is coming from. So, all right, I'm going to enjoy my coffee and do some morning pages. Yesterday I did not go get around to doing that because by the time I got done what I needed to get done, it was time to go to the little festival that was a bust. <laughs> that was just so underwhelming. Um, but I feel bad for the craft people. You know, people just aren't buying like they used to. Uh, the frou-frou stuff. So, and if they make a living doing that, that gets kind of hard. So I guess it impacts most of us, all of us, except for the very wealthy. They just carry on. So anyway, it is our world today. We have to adjust if we're going to be happy campers. All right, I will be back shortly at the budget book. Okay, back at the budget book. Well, yesterday was the day we went to the little art festival, and I do mean little. Um, they really didn't have one thing that I was interested in. Lots of wreaths and uh, fudge they had, and they had um, some lotions. One woman had soap and uh, things that they made from their goat milk. Um, there was one, um, apothecary in the, in the little thrift store there. That was kind of neat. It was nice, the way they had everything set up. Um, and it had, uh, a, a, an apothecary cabinet that uh, was really cool. I really liked it, but <laughs> it was $800, and no, I'm not spending that either. But those apothecary cabinets are expensive. If you look, um... On Amazon and things they they do uh, they're very costly that's kind of why I made my own um, out of really cheap uh, things that I found at Mark's and you guys have all seen it it's that <laughs> those are out of like uh, individual um, sections that I glued together and painted so, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with the way that turned out. But anyway, so kind of, you know, DIY your things if, if you can. So here's my donation box. I've got that going on. And of course, my table's a mess, as always. So just ignore that. Let's get back to the budget book. <laughs> All right, so anyway, yesterday I get a red X because while we were out, uh, we did stop for ice cream, so but that was three fifty, and like I said, I want to start doing more things that um, more social things because I find that I, I can very easily isolate myself because I do like to be alone. You know, I enjoy my alone time, but I realize it's not good to always be alone. So I'm I'm trying to cultivate that. Uh, the more social side of me. Don't get me wrong, it's not like I, I hate socializing, but too much of it, and uh, I, I don't like too much of it. So I want to start doing things like going to our pool, and I mean, we pay for it through the association, so I might as well use it. And then I bought that little kitty pool. It's actually a doggy pool, that I want to set up in the backyard once the hot weather kicks in. I think that'll be fun. I really don't think my dogs will get in it because they're they're not real crazy about water. They're not water dogs. But, um, you know, if they get in, that would be great. But it's something that I can sit in, you know, just up, up to my uh, waist, probably not even that much, and maybe have a cool drink and... Um, just enjoy myself. So that's what my plan is for the summer. 
I want to try and make it a big long staycation if I can. So um, anyway, it some of it will involve spending a little bit of money. You know, I'll have some lunches with friends, not dinners, they're too expensive, and um, do some other things. Well, hello. Hello. Hi, buddy. Oh, I think somebody wants to go O-U-T. It's funny how with dogs you have to spell some words because they definitely understand human language. They understand, you know, sometimes you wonder who's the smartest because they understand what we're saying, but a lot of times if you're not in tune to your dog, you have no idea what they're saying. But I'm pretty in tune to these guys. And I can uh, pretty well um, know what they want. So, okay, <clears throat> I'm going to let these guys out and get to writing my morning pages. Well, I'm sitting out here in my garden this morning, and I just cannot even believe how much my garden has grown in uh, these few days. I mean, I just haven't been out here for maybe five days, and <laughs> it's just gone absolutely crazy. I, I can't even believe it. This is the best my garden has ever, ever been, and I'm just so happy that all my hard work paid off, and um, I got to trim back all my tomatoes, my peppers, my grapevines are just loaded with grapes, and I didn't even feed them, so um, I, I'm very happy with my garden this year. So if you're intimidated by gardening, don't be. Get yourself some containers and, and grow some food. You know, even if it's just a, a tomato or two and some peppers, um, it'll it'll give you uh, at least some food that's fresh. You know, put a little lettuce in, in a bowl and grow that, and you'll have enough to probably have uh, salads all summer. Um, if you keep replenishing the lettuces, they'll continue to grow and harvest them while they're still young. And you'll have, um, you won't have to go to the store and buy a salad at all. You'll have peppers and, you know, and, and plant yourself some uh, green onions. Buy the store-bought ones and uh, stick them in a pot uh, of, of soil and feed everything. And really, you'll have a fresh salad all summer long. Now, of course, the tomatoes and the peppers, they're not going to be ready until later in the summer. But you can definitely grow greens. You can grow spinach, kale. I'm, I'm liking the perpetual spinach, which is actually a chard that tastes like spinach. So uh, you can grow that. Oh, there's, there's tons of food that you can grow in little pots, even on a balcony. Um, Get yourself a grow light. They aren't that expensive. Some some of them are, but some of them um, you can buy uh, less expensive ones. And uh, you know you can even grow it inside under a grow light. So um, grow yourself a garden. It's very very satisfying, um, and it, it's something that connects you to the earth, even if it's in a pot. You know, it still connects you to the earth, which we, I think we all need to get back to that. We've gotten so far away from um, communing with the earth and, um, you know, getting back to our, our roots, literally our roots, because we all come from the earth, you know, that we, re we really need to reconnect with that because it's very good for your your psyche and your soul and um, I think that's important so anyway I have my work cut out for me this morning I have lots of trimming to do I've got some harvesting to do and uh, that'll keep me busy all day of course the laundry <laughs> oh boy that's gonna have to wait again and um, Next time it rains, I'll, I'll start, I'll go back to the decluttering. Now, Tuesday, the declutter people are coming. I do have a box for them, a couple of things to go. 
uh, if I have enough energy later when I'm tired or it gets too hot out here. Wow, that's a loud one. Um, then I'll go in and maybe throw a few more things in a box. So, but it doesn't matter because they have to come here anyway because my neighbor has a lot for them to pick up. So, okay, I'm going to get busy and do a little gardening work. Um, maybe I'll show you my front garden. A couple people have asked to see that. So, but that needs work. It needs to be uh, weeded and trimmed. But right now I'm kind of focused on my food garden back here. So, all right, I will be back a little later, and uh, we'll see what's what. Well, I'm sitting here in my front garden. And I was just checking that out too, and it really needs a lot of work. Right now, there's really not much blooming. Um, the cone flowers and the balloon flowers will be coming up soon. The annuals are sort of just getting started. So there's not much to look at here in the front garden. So, But I'm going to show it to you because it's going to be like a before video. And then once it starts blooming again, um, I'll do another tour and you can see how it is with everything blooming. So usually my garden is blooming one after the other, but right now there's really not much happening here other than a lot of overgrowth and weeds. So, um... Without further ado, let me show you what's happening in my front garden, and then I'll do a follow-up video at some point after it, uh, it comes back to life. All right, let's go. All right, well, there's a little bird, and they have made their nest right in between my gutters and the house. I don't even know how they got in there. They pulled down part of the the thing there and uh, built their nest there. So I'm not going to disturb them until their babies leave because uh, I want the babies to survive. So the mom and the dad, they both feed the babies and they're very busy. They're very industrious little birds. So I don't know how many are in there. I have no idea how they got in there, but there they are. Uh, who knows, maybe they're even doing a second batch. Sometimes that happens. They do more than one uh, brood. But there, there she goes. All right. Well, these are the um, baskets on my front porch that I planted with two diapers and uh, some sponges. And they are doing beautifully. They both are. I've been pinching off the flowers of the coleus because I don't want them to die out and um, I want them to continue to grow so that's what I do. This wandering jenny is even starting to bloom. It's doing beautifully. So that worked for me. Uh, I took two Dollar Tree diapers and cut up one sponge and uh, I lined this with the diapers. The cut up sponge I put at the bottom with the dirt and it's doing beautifully and I don't have to water them twice a day so that worked out well. Um, okay I had to go in for a little bit because my neighbor was out and Lizzie was barking so Anyway, these are doing okay. Um, I need to feed those more often because I've had these in these pots for years and years. And last year I trimmed them into this poof thing so I could plant flowers underneath. Um, but, you know, these flowers kind of struggle because this takes a lot of the nutrition. 
So, but they're doing okay. And then I have these. These are doing very well. So, and that planter's from the Dollar Tree, and that blue is what actually I want to pla uh, paint my shutters. And of course, my little gnomes. Hello. <laughs> All right, and over here, same thing. And then I have this hanging basket. It's doing beautifully too. I have my um, window box, and these were all rescue flowers. They were like half dead when I got them, but they're doing beautifully. The Wandering Jenny comes back every year. And then, uh, so that's doing well. So let's go look somewhere else. Now these petunias, I can't remember if they replanted themselves because it was a fairly mild winter here. Or I think I scattered some seeds in here and just covered them with a plastic thing uh, way back uh, the beginning of March when it was still really cold out. And they all came up and it's, it's doing beautifully. They're just now starting to bloom. They're beautiful purple color. Um, I don't know if there's any other colors, but... Uh, and then my little zinnias, they're struggling a little bit, but I have to deadhead those. And then, of course, my Wandering Jenny came back again from last year. So that's doing well. So let's go look at uh, something else. Okay, over here I have more flowers and more Wandering Jenny that I just stuck in there. Um, and then <laughs> I have a tomato growing here. Uh, this is um, um, a cherry tomato, but I have to cut all these uh, tomato leaves off because I want it to grow up. So um, it'll grow up this stalk. So anyway, uh, that is my tomato, and I do have to deadhead my zinnias. I just have zinnias and marigolds, and then, um, I forget what these are, but I need to deadhead this so that they keep blooming. So, and I have the same going on on the other side. My uh, irises are done blooming. I have to cut those back. And then over here I have a different cherry tomato that I need to take care of, and they're all starting to get little tomatoes. So, um, this one now has developed two stalks. I really wanted to keep it as one, but I'm probably, yeah, that one's got tomatoes, so I'm just going to let it go. But I am going to cut all this off the bottom so that the flowers can grow. And I have the same thing over here. So, and over here I have some cone flowers that are starting to come up. So I need to cut these out. I have one lily that comes back every year. Um, I should plant some more of those. And then for the fall, I have some mums. But I need to thin this out. So in this garden bed, I have salvia. Now this is about done. I need to cut this off and it'll bloom again. Um, this uh, I'm, I'm kind of training as an... I'm probably going to mispronounce this, Espaldier, um, and this is a Rose of Sharon, and it, it blooms a real pretty purple color. My clematis is pretty much done blooming. So that's what's going on here. These are uh, balloon flowers that come up, and they're really pretty too. They're really getting big. And then here I have a hydrangea, but I need to get all this grass out. Um, I find it, it just kind of grows right in the middle of the plant. So anyway, I have to figure that out. So that needs to all be cleaned up. Um, more cone flowers. They bloom around the same time as the balloon flowers. And so they're sort of pinky purple and the blue looks really nice together. My little uh, carnation is still doing okay need to deadhead that. I need to get rid of some of these dead um, 
sticks. It's more hydrangeas here. All this is hydrangeas. Um, more salvia, different kind. I forget what this is, but it's a perennial. Comes back every year. I have to pull out some of this unanimous. I think I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, lots of work to do here in the front. I have mums coming up for the fall and um, pastas. They come up every year. More mums, more carnations, a different color. Planted those a couple years ago. Um, my little rose bush is blooming. Again, I've got grass all through the inside of it. But it's blooming nicely. This is the biggest this has gotten this year. It's gotten really big. I really don't even want that here because it kind of covers up everything else. So the irises back there are done. I need to cut those off. This is more salvia. That needs to be cut. Lots of work here in the front I need to do. That right there is another um, Rose of Sharon that planted itself. I don't know if I'll keep that there or not. But everything from the spring is pretty much done. I've got some knockout roses there that are starting to bloom, but I need to thin those out too. Lots of weeds going on. So once I get this all um, done and weeded, it'll, it'll be fine. And then this rose of Sharon planted itself too. I'm leaving that there because I had a crab apple here that uh, was diseased, so I took that out. And um, so the spider wart is doing well. I have some iris that I planted here that I'm going to plant somewhere else because it's it's too close to the. Um, to the mowers they'll come in here so anyway that's my front garden and I know it needs a lot of work it's not as nice as it usually is but I've kind of been focused on my backyard so lots of work to do here all right so there is my front garden <laughs> it's blown up too this rain just just made everything so lush and green I mean it's it's really kind of nice but it really needs to be um, taken care of my lavender here is blooming too I don't even know if you can see that little lavender so lots of things that I need to uh, pull out and transplant and do something with all right, so there we go. There's my front garden. All right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Thanks for watching.